Good afternoon and welcome everyone to Orlando, Florida. I'd like to thank very much the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine for having me today to speak to you, Dr. Klatz and Dr. Goldman, always for organizing such great events where we come and meet and share information. And today's topic is very, very, very important, and uh, it's hormones, the next breakthrough for weight loss. It gives us a great insight of, it reverses everything we learn about, you know, eat less and exercise more. We're going to talk about all the factors that make our patients gain weight and how we can help them achieve not only weight loss, because as doctors, as internists, as family practitioners, we're dealing with many issues that come with obesity. It's not just obesity, it's a metabolic syndrome, it's diabetes, it's hypertension, it's high cholesterol, it's not just giving them medication. So in today's lecture, we're going to talk about, we're going to have like um, a roundup of many of the hormones that control weight. We're going to talk about the effect of many of the diets on the market and how they affect weight as well, low fat and low carb, how they affect the treatment we're giving our patients. We're going to talk about food allergies. It's a part of the obesity problem. 10% of people are allergic to something that makes them also gain weight, whether it's soy or milk uh, or beef. And we're going to talk about how you can identify these types of patients that may be allergic to certain foods that make them crave the same types of food that makes them also gain weight. To talk about neurotransmitters, it's very, very important to know that 90% of people who are really overweight have a problem with neurotransmitters as well. I'm going to talk about how we identify these patients and how you can help them. Toxins around us, they're all over the place, from plastic bottles to pesticides to herbicides, they're all affecting. If hormones control three-fourths of the problem of obesity, toxins around us is maybe for the other one-fourth, and it's causing us to gain weight. It's causing estrogen dominance. I'm going to present to you a hormone-friendly diet, and it's coming from the American Academy of Anti-Aging by me attending conferences one after the other and lecture after the other to come up with a diet that is really good for our patients, that does not disturb their hormones, that is good for them. I'm going to talk about the latest research on cholesterol. So weight gain, of course, is not about calories. Let's forget that, because yes, of course calories do matter to a certain degree, but you can really get away with extra four, or 500 calories if you eat a balanced diet, and really if your hormones are messed up, you're not going to lose weight. If you have insulin resistance, you're not going to lose weight. If you're a man and you have a low testosterone, you're not going to lose weight. You can tell the patients to cut all the calories they want, they're not going to lose weight because it's the hormones that control our weight, our metabolism, and every function in the body. We talk about how you can address with your patient dietary modifications, how they can really improve their diet around, how can they really change their health around, because again, obesity is not just being overweight or it's a cosmetic issue, we're talking about all the diseases that we're dealing with on a daily basis. Lifestyle changes, dealing with stress. If you're running away from the dinosaur, you're not going to think about eating, but your body is going to, you're going to turn overweight because your body is conserving energy and in turn, cortisol is going to go up. So relaxation, meditation is very part, part of the equation to lose weight because in order to lose weight, cortisol has to come down because it's linked to abdominal fat, getting adequate sleep for growth hormone production and for regulation of ghrelin, limiting alcohol. We're all been brainwashed. We have to drink a glass of red wine every night, but it's not true. When you, when you consume too much alcohol, it really messes hormones. The statistics, we all know them. Of course, two-thirds of our Americans are really overweight, and being overweight predisposes one to over 35 major diseases. We're dealing with these diseases every single day in our practice. Diabetes, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, sleep apnea, fatty infiltration of the liver. You can imagine, it's mostly what we're doing every day. So we're going to talk about the hormones that control weight, cortisol, DHEA, insulin, thyroid hormone, female and male sex hormones, leptin, growth hormone, and ghrelin. Allergies, neurotransmitters, food addiction. A lot of people are addicted to food. Yes, hormones do matter, but a lot of people just eat at when they're stressed um, or because of a problem in a relationship. So we're also going to talk about how to deal with this in order for you to help your patients. Toxins, possible infectious etiology. Starting with cortisol. Now cortisol is the only hormone that goes up as we age. And it's negatively affected by sugar. When we eat low-fat products or anything with refined carbohydrates, that makes the insulin secreted. And as insulin gets the sugar, 
to be metabolized, cortisol is called upon, so it comes also secreted in circulation. So in turn, really cortisol and insulin are interconnected. Cortisol would come now to deal with the sugar that was lowered to get more sugar. So in turn, insulin resistance will lead to cortisol problem, and in turn, that will lead to weight gain. So most people who have high insulin will also have a high cortisol level. And of course, cortisol is linked to one of the worst types of obesity, which is abdominal obesity, which is linked to inflammation. High sensitive C-reactive protein. How many of our patients have high sensitive C-reactive protein? We're trying to lower it by omega-3 fatty acid, taking an aspirin. But if patients really lose that abdominal obesity, their sensitive C-reactive protein may come down. And of course, with high sensitive C-reactive protein and inflammation, it's increased risk for heart disease. So it's not only your patients have to deal with cutting the sugar out of their diet, but they're also going to have to deal with stress. They're going to have to meditate. They're going to have to relax every single day for 10 minutes and do absolutely nothing. Not read a book, not watch TV, because it's part of the hormonal balance, part of the hormonal symphony to get all the hormones working together. Of course, as I mentioned, high cortisol is linked to insulin resistance. And when people are stressed for a long time, when they have a high cortisol for a long time, well, now osteoporosis becomes an issue. Um, and of course, when cortisol is high, it will lead to disturbance in the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So people will come to you maybe when they're stressed, they're asking for ED pills, or they may come with irregular periods. Uh, they will have maybe hypertension. They will have high cholesterol. They may ask you for a sleeping pill or maybe even depression because when cortisol is, is high, it's going to suppress melatonin. Cortisol is what wakes up, up in the morning. So it's very, very important that when we go to sleep at night, all the lights must be dimmed. We must go to bed early to lower cortisol uh, level in order for melatonin to predominate. So if somebody's watching TV till 2 o'clock in the morning, they're going to have a high cortisol level because all the lights around us are affecting cortisol. And as you can see from uh, this chart of how hormones are made in the body, that from pregnolone is the precursor of 17-hydroxypregnolone. And when we are stressed, what's going to happen is from pregnolone, we're going to go to that route here instead of going toward the sex hormones. So instead of going to make testosterone, estrogen and progesterone, the body will convert the pregnolone now towards 17-hydroxyprogesterone and then towards cortisol. So no wonder when we stress, we have no desire to have sex and we have uh, uh, decreased libido, we may even have infertility problem because now the adrenal hormones, they make, the adrenals make part of the sex, part, some part of the sex hormones, now they're all messed up because everything is going towards cortisol. So very, very important to balance cortisol.